and here we are again with another video. Sorry for the delay, but I hope it, it's worth it. So we are going to take a look at the extensor tendons at the wrist. Okay, I'm going to show you how to how I proceed to detect these tendons and uh, the systematic approach. Okay, so first of all, this is the we are going to start at the third compartment. Okay, the third compartment will be the first one we are going to check, and this will be the extensor pollicis longus. And to uh, search this tendon, to locate this tendon, the first thing is to take a look at the wrist, at the dorsal wrist. I usually use a gel, um, bo um, bottle of gel or a towel, okay, to ask for the patient to rest and to have a slightly uh, flexed uh, wrist, okay, a palmar flexion of the wrist. And we are going to, here you have this image of the Dr. Carrera and Rain and this amazing image of uh, uh, anat anatomy. And this is a reconstruction with ultrasound, okay. So the first structure we are going to search will be located just right there with the ultrasound just located there. And we will obtain this image. And this is very important, okay, to locate this structure, this bony structure, very characteristic that will be the Lister's tubercle. The Lister's tubercle will be the first landmark and the most important landmark in the dorsal side of the wrist. Okay? So usually it has this wavy shape, but sometimes it's not so, uh, it's more rounded or sometimes it has a double horn, okay? So it's, it's quite um, frequent to find different shapes. Usually this, this one is the most frequent, okay? And at the base, in the ulnar side, at the base of this lizard tubercle, you will find this structure that will be the extensor pollicis longus. And I, I need you to remember the word longus because this word is very important to the mnemonics I'm going to tell you right now, okay? So extensor pollicis longus, okay, first compartment. And in ultrasound, we always search for um, reminiscences of these images. And for me, this, is the, this tendon will be the surfer just into the barrel, okay? Second compartment, we are going to move radial and we are going to um, examine the second compartment, okay? And at this level, we will find, we are going to move and we will find these tendons over there. Very important to be at this flat surface of the radius, okay? And you will see both uh, these two tendons very similar in terms of size or shape, okay? And this will be the extensor carpi radialis. Brev is the first one, and longus the second one, okay? So extensor carpi radialis brevis and extensor carpi radialis longus. Second compartment. You notice this fibrillar image very, very thin over there, this will be the retinaculum stabilizing the second compartment, okay? Perfect. If we turn the probe, oh, sorry, <laughs> those tendons again, reminiscences, for me, uh, those tendons are very similar, are very, very uh, similar in, in terms of shape or size, so for me, they are like twins, okay? These bold twins is the best image I can show you to remember the extensor uh, carpi radialis brevis and longus. Okay, if we turn the probe over the extensor carpi radialis brevis, we're going to see this tendon on this long axis and its insertion in the base of the third metacarpal. And now is the turn of the extensor carpi radialis longus, and in this case, this tendon will insert in the base of the second metacarpal. Okay, so. Uh, brevis in the third one, longus in the second one, and both are extensor of the uh, wrist, of course. Okay, so now we are going to turn to examine the first compartment, so important because this so much pathology at this level. So to um, examine this, the first compartment, we are going to ask the patient to place the wrist in the neutral pronosupination position okay, at this level and uh, usually in ulnar deviation to have a better view of this first compartment just here in the radial side of the radius of the wrist, okay? And again, if we are at the second compartment and we turn more radial, you are going to see the first compartment. 
The first compartment, as I told you before, is very important. You are, need to check this uh, flat surface again, okay, in the uh, right, in the um, external side of the right of the wrist, and you will see two tendons. The first one, usually smaller, will be the extensor um, pollicis brevis, and the second one, usually bigger, will be the abductor pollicis longus. Okay? And the extensor pollicis brevis and the abductor pollicis longus form the first compartment the place where uh, we are going to search for the Carvan's disease. Okay? And surrounding these tendons, you will see these fibrillar, very, very thin structures, if there is no pathology here, that will be the retinaculum. So always check for both tendons and the retinaculum at this side. Usually, you will find that you only see one tendon because they are so compressed, usually, that sometimes it's difficult to distinguish both. You need to go more distal to distinguish between them. And the other important thing is that the uh, abductor pollicis longus usually is multifascicular. The normal uh, anatomic variant of this tendon is several fascicles, usually three, four, even five or six fascicles. So as you follow the tendon distally, and uh, don't be surprised if this tendon opens in several tendons, okay? So this is the normal variant anatomy, okay? And now the mnemonics. As I told you, the unique uh, name you need to remember is the extensor pollicis longus, just the third compartment, just in the ulnar side of the lesser tubercles. So this is longus, so this will be the extensor capillary radialis brevis, extensor capillary radialis longus, extensor pollicis brevis, and abductor pollicis longus. So this is longus brevis, longus brevis, longus. Okay? So remember, these alternance and remember the names of the tendons. Now we are going to check the rest of the compartments and we return again to the lizard tubercles and now we are moving the probe at the ulnar side to search to locate and to examine the fourth compartment. The fourth compartment will be located here and will be a form uh, of the tendons of the extensor digitorum at this level and another one the extensor um, indices propius. And in the um, more, uh, more deeper, and you, here you will see the extensor indices propius inside the fourth compartment. Okay? And usually this tendon, as you go distal, will join together with this component here that will be the component of the extensor digitorum to the second uh, digit, the second um, finger. Okay? So both tendons, the extensor indices propius and the extensor digitorum for the second finger, will join together at the um, metacarphalangeal joint. Okay? Perfect. The next one we are going to see will be the component for the third finger, and finally the component for the fourth finger. Sometimes you will see another tendon which will be for the fifth finger, but the most common variant, anatomic variant, will be that the tendon for the fifth finger will be outside the fourth compartment, okay? So if we move a little bit more ulnar, as you can see here, we're going to detect the fifth compartment here, just at the distal radiolunar joint. Just above the joint, you will see this tendon here that will be the extensor digiti minimi. The extensor digiti minimi usually um, divides into two fascicles that both go to the fifth finger. So the most common variant will be these two tendons, but both from the same tendon at the fifth compartment. Other times, you will see a tendon reaching the extensor digiti minimi from the fourth compartment. But this is the most common vari anatomic variant. Remember, the fifth finger has two tendons, and the, in this, the second finger has two tendons, two extensor tendons. Okay? Perfect. And finally, we are going to ask the patient to pronate the wrist, to examine the sixth compartment, and to take a look just at the ulnar side of the ulna, at the medial side of the ulna, just here, and you will see this um, shape here, this, um, 
this valley here, okay, uh, this groove, okay, sorry, I didn't remember the name, this groove here, that will be for the extensor calpionaris, that will be the sixth compartment. Again, the extensor calpionaris is stabilized by this retinaculum over there. Okay? So this will be the extensor calpionaris. And this tendon is very special in terms of stability. So if you want to perform a good evaluation of this tendon, you need to examine this tendon uh, with dynamic maneuvers. And to do so, we usually begin at the pronation and start the supination of the wrist, usually with the elbow at the table. Okay? So it's quite difficult. You must try it several times. And in pronation, you are going to see, just wait a little bit. Okay, here, you see the extensor capillaries at this groove, and as we turn and supinate, the extensor capillaries um, subluxates, okay, to the anterior side, as you can see, just right here. Okay? So, stabi stabilized, and it's going outside the groove. So, this movement of the extensor capillaries is normal. As we go in supination, it tends to go outside the groove. And it's not non-pathologic, with the exception of this the painful, with a um, um, with, um, click, okay? And pain with the movement. And of course, if you put a probe and you see this tendon, which is a bigger a hypochoic with a synovitis surrounding the tendon, and of course, if you compare with the contralateral side and there are differences, then it becomes pathologic. But the tendon going outside the groove is not pathologic itself, okay? And if we turn the probe over this stensocapillaries in its long axis, you can follow the tendon distally and you will see how it's going, sorry, here, okay? This uh, going, um, spacing through the um, un uh, unocarpal joint right, at this level, and it will form part of this uh, fibrocartilage, this complex fibrocartilage at this level, okay? Um, this triangular fibrocartilage, but it's very difficult to assess this area properly. It's very, very difficult to find pathologies with ultrasound. So we are going only to check the anatomy of the tendon and following the tendon distally and see how it reaches the base of the fifth metacarpal at this level. So the insertion of the, this extensor capillaries is at the base of the fifth metacarpal. Okay? And of course, it's extensor of the wrist with the extensor capillary brevis and longus. So those were the extensor tendons of the wrist. I hope you like it. If you like it, please, uh, thumbs up. Uh, it helps our, uh, our channel. And see you in the next video.